I have not gone like this through this with a fine tooth comb yet. We were just like, <laughs> so I, I took a broad based review and kind of thought about it in the sense that it's review. So I don't know how much I'm going to like be able to say, like, this setback is not right. You know what I mean? So typically, what I do is I take the draft that you've given me and I redline it in my version and I put comments in and I see, okay, because I know there's several instances where you say, like, come back to this or, you know, ask so-and-so about this. And typically that's when I would go through and say, okay, this is my thoughts on this section. That's clearly been a topic of discussion. So I like to come with my own red line version to present to you guys and that we can talk through with my proposed changes to an acceptor. But it is something that takes off of mine, right? Now. Yeah, and I, and I can, you know, I always like starting from scratch because then I've got a version that I'm familiar with, but I'm happy to revise it as you guys right. have already. Anything in red is no change. Correct. Red is existing and green is your remains. Okay. Right. Perfect. And that's sometimes that's good to do too, because then you and what I what I typically do, and I was just talking about this at Pine the other night, was um, how I take this is I turn it into an amendatory ordinance. So I say, okay, section three point four of the Township Zoning Ordinance is amended to read in its entirety as follows, because we want to make sure it fits in with where it corresponds with the existing codification. I see you guys have already added like the draft like separability repealer clauses and we'll make sure we you know um you know add language to that so that it's repealing the moratorium and you know any existing conflicting ordinances so Good discussion so we have a motion to proceed on the agenda to review the woodlands <laughs> Do you have a second, Bill? Because I second. I seconded it to move the motion along. Got it. Okay. Okay. All in favor? Say yay. Yay. All opposed. Yay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we do roll call vote next yeah, time. Yeah, <laughs> So. Motion is not carried, so we will not lose. Uh, talk about both plans of the and the um, Also, um, handed out in the, in the packet of information there today, and also was a packet of information that Randy has given you about um, the benefits from um, a wind project, if I may. Say it that way, uh, whether a resident versus a landowner, I guess. Right? Uh, this was given yeah, to you. you by, it, was, it was given to me. It's signed by, by Robert Scott. Submitted by Robert Scott, Sydney Township. I saw him. He presented okay. this at Pine Township meeting last night. He uh, actually was there and presented it to the Planning Commission. Okay. And he asked um, if I would be willing to give pass along these copies um, to the Planning Commission. So, okay, um, so maybe that's more of a public comment. On, the, on, the, on behalf of Robert Scott. Um, I have all drafts to hand it out. Okay. So it's for our information. For your information. Mm -hmm. right. Any other new business? One would be kind of answer questions. Okay. Um, I, I don't use it as on a Q&A for the public, but one question that's been looming on my mind with us as a commission being to pass ordinances that protect the health, safety, and welfare of Cato Township residents. What happens in the event that our ordinance didn't protect somebody and something happens and they get injured? Do they have legal recourse against us as a commission or the township board for passing it? Is there any issues no, there? No, I mean, the, you know, the, the, their legal recourse would be against the, unless the person was, vi if the person was violating the ordinance and we didn't enforce it, then, then that might be a specific okay. issue. But the township can be as permissive or as restrictive as it wants in its ordinance. Obviously, you have a duty as planning commission to, you know, keeping in mind your master plan and the goals of the township, but that's really your goal. Um, you know, the only way, like I said, I, I can see it being an issue is if there was a known violation of the, of the ordinance that we did not enforce or, um, you know, pursue. Okay. Yep. Um, I guess, what about those property value guarantees that was, was brought? Have you seen that? I, I guess it's 
is maybe I like have, and, and actually I, I, put a, I put a legal opinion together for this for another client. Um, I, I, I have some concerns with the property value guarantee agreements and including them as part of the ordinance because um, it's difficult to enforce them and it's like, okay, well, how do we, what, what do we, what, what about inflation and changes in value? And so it's, it's difficult to pinpoint exactly, you know, how are we going to, you know, enforce these agreements when property values fluctuate and change all the time? And how are you going to prove that a deflation in property is directly related to, you know, a, a wind farm or, you know, whatever the proposed land use is? So, there's some question regarding the enforceability of those kinds of agreements and how actually they're implemented. Um, so I, I've seen them before. Um, I don't typically draft ordinances that have them in there, although that's something that we can talk about you know, further when we get into the, to the wind ordinance discussion. But um, they, they just are, they're, they're a little bit difficult to implement and enforce, I guess is the bottom line. Could we read your opinion? Yeah, absolutely. Yep, I will I'll bring a copy of that for next It, or somebody moves into the um, into a uh, you know property that's affected or within a certain setback of the uh, existing you know wind farm that has a disability. I mean, then you, you can't force the wind developer to, to tear down or you know make changes to the um, facility because it's already been constructed and it's a legal non-conforming use. So it's just really difficult to enforce something. I, but I understand the, the, the protection comes in the setbacks, the right. shadow flicker. So I think that's what she's exactly yeah. saying. Us as a commission meeting, we have to when Paul Main addressed it to, we have to get this right now mm -hmm. because these are the things that may be affected in the future. If we do this right now, should eliminate issues in the future. Yeah. So, agreed. Yeah. And uh, just uh, one more question. I know this is very complicated stuff as far as with airports. Yeah. Um, we have, there's just been a lot of conflicting information as far as how close they can be to an airport. And then it's, you know, it's, there's only a ro certain road that they can't even put turbines north of them. Yet I'm looking at these court cases over in the thumb where they're asking for variances and you know, the FAA is pretty loose in their um, approval process of, of um, no hazard. Right. And uh, can you just, I guess, in us, so we'll, I, I guess I'm unclear. The airport is owned by the village, which the village is part of the township, mm -hmm. but they have their own zoning, right? Um, their own airport authority or zoning sure. ordinance. So yeah. okay. it was brought up in a previous meeting about potentially doing a setback from the airport, but yet I, I want to be careful with that because mm -hmm. you know, do we have jurisdiction to even? Yeah, I mean, if, if the property is within the village and the village is separately zoned, then you don't have jurisdiction. Zoning jurisdiction over property outside the village within the township, if that answers your question. And I'm sure they have a zoning, an airport zoning ordinance in place as well that separately regulates property within a certain um, distance from the airport. And there's typically, um, you know, maximum height thresholds based on you know how they are. Uh, they're, they're, they they every um, publicly owned airport has an airport layout plan that's um, set forth by NDOT or the um, State or state uh, department that governs airports within the state of Michigan, and so they they track the runways, and then there'll be um, you know a map that basically delineates like how far away from each runway you can have the height the height of structures, and they do it as like a radius, and so this diameter can have structures within this height threshold, this structure or this diameter can have height structures within this threshold, so. They may have separate jurisdiction over that property depending on how close it is to the um, to the airport. So, but you know, if you set a setback that doesn't that wouldn't even implicate any properties in the township as it relates to the airport, then it doesn't really have any effect. If that makes sense. So, if you, if you say 
setback, but there's no property within the township that's that close to the airport, then um, you know it doesn't really matter for purposes of towards the end. I, I think some of you understand. And I guess it's just something. Long story short, you can't just blanketly say, "Oh, I'm within so many feet of the airport. Feet of the airport. I'm good." You know, we need to. I guess I don't want that myth going around. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, there's yeah. sep there's many other you know like I said there's the airport zoning ordinance the village may have its own separate regulations so there's yeah. very there's tall a lot structures act. tall structures act, act. Yeah. exactly yep. they have to get tall structures permits from MDOT plus FAA approval so and you're right I mean not every um, agency federal and state looks at them as you know stringently as local governments do from a permitting standpoint but you're right I mean there's many many Approvals. And that's all stuff that I would make sure is included within your ordinance that you got to get if you're if you're um, if you need approval if you need a Michigan tall structures permit if you need FAA approval MDOT any other you know count I mean county approval for the drain commissioner county road commission all that stuff is encompassed within the ordinances you know there's a lot of approvals that are needed not just from a zoning standpoint but locally. Airport and lake square that's yeah. a we have sure. two big lakes. Well, we have a lot of lakes, according to our master plan, ones that I don't even know existed. Right. Um, <laughs> but uh, that, that'll be something for future <laughs> sure. discussions. And I, I know you and others, just from watching it kind yesterday, um, that it's going to come up here, too. Yeah, and that's something, you know, we can talk about it kind of. It, when it comes to topography, lakes, rivers, um, elevations of, uh, you know, property, it's not a one-size-fits-all approach. So I... You know, a lot of some some communities that want to, you know, be cost effective and don't want to hire an attorney. That's perfectly fine with me. But you know, if you just take our ordinance on from a, somebody else's website and just adopt it as your own, you know, it may not fit with your community. You have to take into account your land conditions, your existing land uses, your topography, and what one regulation that may be, um, you know, might make sense in this community, even if they're in the same county, might not make sense in another county. So. It's not a one-size-fits-all approach. Yeah. Any other questions for Leslie? Okay, then we'll get further in depth in some of these topics as we move forward for sure. Yeah. So. Um, just a couple more things. Our next meeting is February 9th at 5 o'clock. Um, if, as a reminder, if you have a proposal for the bylaws, um, please make sure that that's distributed to me so I can get it to everyone before our next meeting because it's my belief that we as a commission need to vote on our bylaws on how or whether we're going to amend them. Okay. So. Did you say you have to copy also? I'll take care of that. Please don't send them off on any information other than what you. Um, it, it will come either from myself or Tom. Can I get a motion to adjourn? I'll second the motion. I'll support your motion. Support your motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried.